All right, guys, uh, let's get started. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so far we have finished all the lectures on cement and concrete materials. So today we talk about uh, a special type of testing called uh, non-destructive testing method. So this is uh, one category of testing on concrete materials. And uh, Wednesday this week, uh, we talk about wood and composite materials. And for next week, uh, we talk about asphalt. Okay. Um, all right. So before I forget, uh, let me remind you, uh, this week we have our last lab sessions, uh, lab number five, which is uh, testing the strength of concrete. Okay. So I'm gonna see some of you for uh, in this afternoon or Monday sessions. Okay. All right. So lecture number nineteen, NDT. Uh, first of all, what is NDT? Okay. So NDT is called non-destructive testing or NDE, which is non-destructive uh, evaluation. Okay, so this is a category of tests that does not impair the intended performance of structure elements or members. Okay, uh, for example, we can measure the physical properties or flaws inside the members. Okay, without impair the strength uh, of the uh, specimen. Okay, so this is a testing method that measure physical properties or detecting flaws, uh, especially flaws inside. Sorry, flaws inside a specimen. Okay, for example, uh, we can check if the bonding between the reinforcement and the concrete inside the concrete is good or not. Okay. Or we can check if uh, a repair of existing materials or concrete is good or not. Okay. Uh, or we can check if we have any cracks inside after welding. Okay. Uh, so the method can measure physical properties of detecting floors, especially the floors we cannot see from outside. So the reason we perform NDT on concrete is that, you know, in the US, every year we spend hundreds of billion dollars on concrete. Okay, so for new construction, uh, we can do quality assurance uh, for new construction. For example, we can check if the strength development of concrete is okay over time. Or we can check the rebar location the depth of rebar or the bonding between the rebar and concrete. Okay. Uh, another example is uh, troubleshooting problems with new construction. For example, cracking due to shrinkage or thermal expansion or due to loading. Uh, or we can do condition evaluation of old concrete. Okay. For example, checking the internal floors between the old concrete and new concrete, and also quality assurance of concrete repairs. Okay. Uh, we can do rapid assessment of large volume of concrete because typically uh, the instrument for entity method is pretty small. Okay. So this is a bit of uh, destructive testing. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, the compressive machine is too big, so we cannot bring that to, to the field. Okay. But for NDT method, uh, we can bring an ultrasound uh, or GPR uh, to the site, and we can measure uh, test concrete in a short period of time. Okay. We can also determine the in-situ properties okay, uh, very easily. Uh, we're gonna talk about that more in a moment. Right. So the simplest 
NDT method is visual inspection. So we look at uh, the members using our naked eye. And actually, we should always use visual inspection before any type of NDT method. Okay. We can see where the cracks or spot is. Okay. Uh, and based on that, we will know the possible reasons for different type of uh, stresses. So visual inspection can provide valuable information regard regarding the locations and the type of surface damage. Okay. So the damage only limited to the surface because uh, using uh, visual inspection, we can only see the surface of the member. Okay. And based on that, and the knowledge of the concrete specimen, uh, we probably can know the possible causes of the stresses. Okay. Uh, almost always use visual inspection to supplement other NDT method. Okay. And its effectiveness is largely governed by experience and the knowledge of inspect. Okay. So uh, for example, cracks in concrete can be caused by many, uh, many reasons. For example, shrinkage, uh, ASR, or alkaline silicon reaction, corrosion of rebar can also cause uh, cracking of concrete, a soffit attack, or free soil damage of concrete. So based on the patterns of the cracking, location of the cracks, uh, and other information, uh, we can somehow get the possible reasons for the deterioration of concrete. Okay, so always use visual inspection before any NDT method. So classification of NDT method on concrete. Uh, the first category is based on mechanical testing, uh, including surface hardness method, penetration method. So we use this method to estimate the strength of concrete. Okay. And the first one is called rebound hammer or rebound method. Uh, this master uh, is an instrument, something looks like this. Okay. Uh, inside the hammer, we have a uh, plunger. So the plunger is connected to the hammer by a spring. Okay. So we push the rebound hammer into the concrete surface vertically. Okay. And at a certain location, uh, the spring will be released. So the hammer will be released and it will be rebound after touch the surface of the concrete. So depending on the surface hardness of the concrete, the higher the surface hardness, the higher the rebound of the hammer. So the hammer can give a, a rebound number between 10 to 100. So basically the higher the rebound number, the higher the surface hardness of concrete. Okay. Uh, because the surface hardness of concrete has some kind of correlation with the strength of concrete. So this method can also give some information about the strength of concrete. Okay. All right, so uh, again, we push the hammer onto the surface of concrete and the hammer will be released by the spring and based on rebound number, we can estimate the strength of concrete. Uh, but I should emphasize that this method will only measure the surface hardness of concrete, okay? uh, not the strength of concrete. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, the surface hardness of concrete is controlled by many factors including uh, the aggregate, the moisture content of the concrete, and also the strength of concrete. So the strength of concrete is only one factor controlling the surface hardness of concrete. Okay. Uh, however, we can use 
rebound hammer to monitor the strength development of concrete. Because in that case, uh, all the factors in concrete does not change. So we do not change the type of aggregate. We do not change the moisture content. So the only thing change is the strength of concrete. So anything happen on the strength will reflect in uh, the, the rebound number, number. Okay. So based on that, we can monitor the strength development of concrete. Okay. So again, we push the hammer vertically onto the surface of concrete and based on the rebound number, we can estimate uh, the strength of concrete. The next method is called proof penetration. Uh, this method is also a measurement of surface hardness. Okay. So uh, the proof penetration uh, looks like this. Uh, the proof has a diameter with a certain size and certain lines. Okay. So this is the semi-destructive semi test okay. uh, because uh, the proof is penetrate about one or two inch deep into the concrete. So the concrete is actually damaged somehow. <clears throat> so after the test, uh, we need to repair the concrete surface. Uh, the probe penetration also measure the surface hardness. Okay. Uh, same to the rebound hammer. Okay. Again, uh, based on the surface hardness, we can somehow estimate the compressive strength of concrete. So that is first category. Uh, we estimate the strength of the concrete. So the second sec uh, category of NDT method uh, is testing method which measure the physical property instead of mechanical properties. Okay, uh, we're gonna discuss maturity method, uh, uh, resonant fr frequency method, uh, ultrasound pulse velocity method. Uh, among others. Okay. Uh, maturity. Uh, what is maturity? Uh, maturity is estimation of the degree of hydration of concrete. Okay. Uh, in early lecture, we discussed uh, degree of hydration of concrete. Okay. Because the degree of hydration is a measurement of how much cement is hydrated. And hydration of cement is chemical reaction. And this chemical reaction is affected by the temperature and also how long the concrete hydrated. Okay. So maturity is measured by time times temperature. So let me share the screen with you. All right. So maturity actually is defined as time times temperature, okay? So T is the actual temperature of the materials. And T zero is uh, the so-called the dirt time temperature. Or well, the temperature when concrete stop hydration. So T0 or the dirt time temperature uh, sometimes is zero degree Celsius, sometimes it is uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius. So that depends. Okay. So okay. 
and delta t is uh, the time interval between uh, during night temperature. Okay. So maturity can be quantified based on the curve of temperature versus time. Okay. So this is curve of temperature versus time. The x axis is time. The y axis is temperature. Okay. So by measuring the areas underneath the curve, uh, we can quantify the maturity. For these two uh, these two concrete on the left and right, because the maturity is the same. Okay. The area is the same. Seven hundred twenty degree hours. Okay. So as a result we see these two concrete has the same maturity. So these two concrete has the same degree of hydration. Okay. So we can easily measure the maturity of the concrete by monitor the temperature over time. Okay, we use a thermal couple, which looks like a, a steel wire, which is embedded inside a concrete. So over time, the delta logger can measure the temperature over uh, over time, so we can easily plot the the curve of temperature versus time. Okay, so that is the maturity method. All right. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about the waves. Okay. Uh, before we talk about ultrasound. Uh, Let's discuss what is wave. So in general, wave is a uh, disturbance or variance that transfer energy from one point to another point in a medium. So that medium can be air, can be concrete, can be steel, or even can be a vacuum. Okay. And the energy can be in the form of an elastic deformation. For example, we impact the concrete is a hammer. So we transfer a elastic energy, elastic deformation inside the concrete. Okay. Can also be in a form of electric or magnetic intensity in the form of uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay. Or even uh, electric potential or temperature. Okay. So wave can be in many different forms. In this class, in this lecture, uh, we emphasize on uh, uh, mechanical waves. So let's say we use a hammer to impact on the surface of a concrete. So that's the point of impact. Right. So after the impact, the hammer will generate basically three different type of waves. Okay. Uh, that waves generate due to the compression of the concrete. Okay. We call that longitudinal wave or L wave. Okay. We can also call that compression waves or P waves. They are waves which is caused by uh, shear of concrete. Okay. Or we call that transverse waves or T wave. We also have the waves which only transfer between the boundary of the concrete and air. Okay, uh, we call that surface wave or R wave. Okay, so the speed of these three waves are different. Uh, longitudinal waves has the highest speed, highest velocity, and the surface wave or the R wave is the sl slowest. Let's look at the P wave. Okay, so P wave is also called primary waves. It is caused by compression of the medium of the concrete. Okay. So any medium has elastic response to compression. Uh, compression wave can propagate in that medium. Okay. So let's say this is 
the direction of excitation. Uh, if we focus on one particle, so the particle is moved from left to right, and direction of travel of the wave is also from left to right. So the direction of travel is the same as direction of particle motion. Okay. Again, any medium, any medium uh, which can have an elastic response to compression, compression wave can propagate in that medium. So compression wave can propagate in solid, liquid, and gases. And the governing parameter for compression wave is Young's models E value and also the density of the, uh, the materials. This is a shear wave. Okay. Uh, another name for shear wave is called secondary waves. The direction of excitation is up and down, as we can see from here. So the, the particle motion is from is up and down. But direction of travel is also uh, is still from left to right. So direction of travel is perpendicular to the direction of particle motion. So any medium has elastic response to shear, including uh, solid shear wave can probably be in that medium because fluid and gases do not have elastic response to shear so shear wave cannot propagate in fluid and gases okay so remember that the governing parameter for shear wave is shear modulus or the g value and also the density of the materials So before we talk about ultrasound, uh, let's review some basic of acoustic. So V is the velocity of a wave, uh, F is the frequency, and lambda is the wavelength. So the velocity of wave is equal to F frequency times the wavelength lambda. Okay. And the wave velocity is the material properties, uh, which means the velocity does not change depending on the frequency. Okay. So the frequency of the wave can change significantly, as you can see from here. Okay. So less than 15 to 20 hertz, we call that infrasound. Okay. For example, uh, earthquake will generate infrasound. Okay. Elephant or whales can also use infrasound to communicate. So infrasound can communicate over very long distance, hundreds of miles. Okay. But between 20 hertz to 20 gigahertz is audio sound, so which is uh, the band wave human being can hear. Beyond 20, 20 gigahertz, a uh, human being cannot hear. So between 20K and one gigahertz is called ultrasound. Okay, so some animal can hear ultrasound. For example, you know, you know if we blow a dog whistle, uh, this is between 20, beyond 20 gigahertz. So dog can hear the dog whistle, but human being cannot. So beyond one gigahertz is called hypersound, okay. So hypersound cannot propagate in air because the wavelength is very small okay, uh, due to the high frequency. For NTT, we use the frequency between 20 gigahertz to one gigahertz because the reason is here. Okay. So because 
the velocity of wave is material properties, which means uh, the velocity does not change depending on uh, frequency. So if we increase the frequency, the wavelength will be smaller. Okay. Uh, the smaller the wavelength, the resolution will be higher, okay. which means the wave can detect smaller flaws. However, because the wavelength is smaller, uh, the wave cannot penetrate very deep inside the materials. So we have smaller penetration. On the other hand, by using lower frequency, we have larger wavelengths. Okay. For larger wavelengths, uh, the resolution is lower. So the wave cannot detect very small flaws. But uh, the good point about low frequency is it can penetrate much deeper. So how to balance the resolution and the penetration uh, we should change the right frequency. So for concrete, uh, we typically use 200k hertz. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is, is here. Okay. So why we should use 20 gigahertz for concrete materials? Okay. Remember, the velocity is equal to frequency f times the wavelength lambda. Okay. So for concrete, uh, you know the mechanical wave in concrete, the velocity is around 4,000 meter per second. Okay. The reason we use 200 K Hertz, the frequency, is because when we choose 200,000 Hertz for a frequency, uh, the wavelength is about 2.02 meter. Uh, Two centimeter. So two centimeter is about three quarter of an inch. Okay. So for three quarter of an inch, is about the size of uh, coarse coarse aggregate. Okay. So why we should use a wavelength similar to the size of the coarse aggregate? Okay. Uh, The reason is because if the wavelength is smaller than the size of the coarse aggregate, uh, the wave may be bounced back by the coarse aggregate. So the penetration will be too shallow. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if we use much larger wavelengths, the resolution will be not good. So we just use the wavelengths similar to the size of the coarse aggregate, so we have the best balance between resolution and the penetration. Okay, so that's the reason why for concrete, we use a frequency of around 2,200 uh, kHz. All right. Then let's talk about ultrasound. Okay. So for ultrasound, uh, we could have two setup. One is we have one tap which send the ultrasound with another part which is receiving the ultrasound. So we have a so-called transmitter which send the ultrasound, a so-called receiver which receive the ultrasound, okay? So the specimen is in the middle. So we, we call that wave transmission method. Uh, we could also have the transmitter and the receiver in the same unit, uh, such as this. So this is a steel plate, the transmitter and the receiver in the same unit. Uh, this uh, is a medium which used to reflect, reflect the, the waves. So in that setup, we call that wave reflection method. 
Okay, again, uh, the transmit and receiver could either be on two side of specimen or in one side of the specimen. For ultrasound, uh, in this special setup, we call that ultrasound pulse velocity. Okay. We measure the velocity of ultrasound inside the concrete. So the transmitter will send the ultrasound and the receiver will on the other side of concrete to receive the sound. Okay. Uh, we can use this instrument to calculate the velocity of the ultrasound. Okay. Because we have a weak correlation between the velocity and the strength of concrete, so based on that, we can estimate the strength of, con of concrete. If, for example, we have large honeycombing between the uh, transmitter and the receiver, the velocity will be much uh, smaller. Okay. Uh, we can also use ultrasound to detect floors inside a concrete. Okay. So based on the correlation between the velocity and the strength, we can estimate the condition of the concrete specimen. Right. Uh, there are many other different type of NDT method. Okay, uh, we will not discuss too much in this class. So in C V seventy five, we only have one lecture covering different type of NDT method. Uh, in graduate level class uh, of our department, C E six eighty eight. Uh, we're going to have much more discussion about all different type of NDT method. Okay. So including half cell potential, uh, linear polar resistance. So these two methods are used to measure the corrosion of rebar. Okay. Uh, we could use a uh, carbon meter to detect uh, the size, depth, and location of reinforcement inside the concrete. Okay. Uh, we could use radiographic testing method to see inside the concrete uh, or infrared thermography method uh, to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, we could use GPR, which is ground penetration radar. Okay. Uh, also see the inside uh, floors and rebar in the concrete specimen. Uh, a cost emission measure or even a CT measure for concrete specimen. Okay. So this is uh, the half set potential measure. Okay. This is the one of the real project. Uh, I did it before I joined UH. Uh, this project is around 12 years ago. This is uh, called Tiger Creek. Okay. This is uh, a canal which uh, bring the water from uh, Sierra Mountains to San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. So the concrete is around 80 to 90 years old, and we use the half cell potential measure to measure uh, the rebar condition inside the concrete. Okay. Uh, this is a GPR or ground penetration radar. Uh, this uh, instrument using uh, electric magnetic wave, the uh, EM wave, to detecting uh, rebar inside reinforcement. Okay, so this instrument can generate a 3D image of the rebar uh, inside the concrete. For example, here is the cross section of the concrete. Uh, this is one rebar. This is another rebar. Okay, and we see uh, different layers of rebar. Uh, inside the specimen. If there's a debounding between the rebar and the concrete, uh, we can also see that from the GPR. <coughs> All right, uh, this is the infrared camera. Okay, so this is the 
another real project uh, which we did about 10 years ago. Uh, this is the creation of reinforcement in one of the uh, pier in San Francisco. Okay, uh, we can see the, the corrosion is very severe. Uh, all the rebar is exposed. Okay, so we use uh, infrared camera to see uh, the damage of the space uh, of the concrete. Okay. All right. So uh, and this is the, the short lecture about NDT master. Uh, we introduce many different type of NDT master. Okay, and each type has its own benefit, uh, which is suitable for uh, specific jobs. Okay, uh, no one NDT master is good for all jobs, so we should choose the right one for the right work. Okay, so uh, for concrete inspection. Typically, is performed as combination approach. We use visual inspection together with NDT methods such as ultrasound, and also some anti-destructive testing method together with uh, traditional destructive testing method such as compression test. Okay. All right, so this is the end of all today's lecture. Uh, remember, we have the last lab for this week. So I see some of you uh, 2.30 this afternoon. Okay, any questions?